In this video, I'll talk about uh, hypothesis testing for multiple linear regression. So we've got our model for this particular data set where we have two predictors, miles x1, deliveries x2, and time is our response variable. And this is for a trucking company. We've estimated our model and come up with three, three estimates for the model parameters or the model coefficients, uh, minus 0.869 for the intercept, 0.06113 for the parameter that multiplies miles, and 0.923 for the parameter that multiplies deliveries. And then we have an analysis of variance table here, and we've already talked about the sums of squares in this column. Uh, the next column in the analysis of variance table are the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom for regression is equal to the number of predictors. So we have two predictors in this model. So that's why there's a two here. And then the total degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. Sample size is 10 in this case. So nine degrees of freedom for the total. And then the error degrees of freedom is simply the difference between the total degrees of freedom and the regression degrees of freedom. And then the mean squares are the ratios of the sums of squares to their degrees of freedom. And then the F statistic is the ratio of the two mean squares. And we can calculate a p-value for that F statistic using the F distribution with two numerator degrees of freedom and seven denominator degrees of freedom. And that p-value is 0 0.0003 in this case. So it's well below a significance level of 0 0.05. So we would reject the null hypothesis in this case. And the null hypothesis that's represented by this test says that the regression parameters for miles and deliveries are both zero in the population. And we're rejecting that possibility because we've got such a small p-value. We're concluding that one or both of these in the population are non-zero. And so this is called an overall test of significance. All that we're able to say at this point is we've found that this model is better than no model at all. But what we don't know is we don't know yet whether is it just miles that's helping us to model y or is it deliveries that's helping us model y or is it both of them together that are helping us model y all we know is that at least one of the regression parameters is not zero possibly both but at least one. So to answer that next question, we have to go to the next step and do individual t-tests for each parameter separately. So that's what we'll talk about now. So to do those tests, we go to the coefficients table. We've already talked about the estimates. The standard errors, are also provided to us in the regression output. And then the test statistic is the ratio of an estimate to its standard error. So we're gonna focus on a test statistic for the miles parameter and for the deliveries parameter. We could do a test for the intercepts, but we're not gonna do that for this example. Okay, let's think about the parameter for miles first. We've got a test statistic of 6.18. We need to figure out a p-value. So the p-value comes from a t-distribution with seven degrees of freedom. And it's a two-tail p-value. So we use the t.dist.2t function and it comes to 0 0.0005. So that p-value is less than a significance level of 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. The null hypothesis in this case is that the regression parameter that multiplies miles 
is equal to zero in the population. And we're rejecting that in favor of the alternative, which says that that parameter is not zero. But there's an important caveat here, and that is this test that we just did is assuming that deliveries is held constant. So what the implication of that is this p-value here tells us that there is an association between time and miles, a linear association between time and miles, as long as we keep in mind that deliveries is in the model and we're thinking of it being held constant while we think about the association between miles and time. Okay, we can do a similar thing for the regression parameter multiplying deliveries. We get 4.18 as the ratio of the estimate to the standard error. It has a p-value that's calculated the same way using a t-distribution with seven degrees of freedom. It comes to 0 0.0042 in this case because this test statistic is not quite as far in the tail as this one was. So the tail area is a little bigger, but it's still very small. It's still smaller than the significance level of 0.05. So again, we would reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's a linear association between deliveries and time if we hold miles constant. So taken together, these two p-values tell us that both of these variables are playing a role in explaining why. The ANOVA table p-value just told us that at least one of these was helping us to model why, but these additional individual t-tests this one told us that miles was useful, and this one told us that deliveries was useful. So they're actually both worth keeping in the model here. These uh, standard errors here, I didn't mention this at the time, but they depend on this number over here. And this number over here is the standard error of the estimate and it's related to the sum of squares for error and the degrees of freedom for error as well. So uh, we could also think about what might happen if we maybe had a third predictor for this data set. So let's suppose we had an X3 and we fit a new model that had X1, X2 and X3 in it. Then this coefficients table would have an additional row for the third predictor. And all these, all these numbers would shift around a bit because everything depends on everything else. Um, but we might find that that third predictor when we look at its t-statistic, it might have a p-value that was larger than 0.05. And in that case, that would tell us that when we keep these two predictors in the model, this third predictor, it's, it's not significant. It's not helping us to explain why. And so in that case, we would be better off just removing it from the model. So that's that's kind of, one of the roles of these p-values in the coefficients table. It can help us with model building and help us determine if there's any predictors that we've included that really aren't very helpful and it would be better off to actually exclude them from the model. Okay, so let's see where all this output is to be found when we fit the model using Excel stat. So we'll fit the model, linear regression, And I'll just quickly check everything looks okay. It does, so I'll okay that. And then we'll take a look at the output and find the overall F-test 
and the individual t-tests. Okay, so we'll scroll down. So here's the analysis of variance table. And here's the F statistic, 32.878. Let's go one more decimal place there, see if it's the same. Yeah, 32.878. And then the p-value, need to go out a few more decimal places to see if it's the same as what we got. Yeah, 0 0.0003, 0 0.0003. Okay, so that's the first thing to look at is see if this p-value here for the overall test is small enough that we would reject the null hypothesis and conclude that this model is, is better than no model at all. Uh, and then the next step can be, okay, of our individual predictors, which ones are significant? And that's when you wanna look at these t-statistics so 6.182, 4.176. Let's go out a few more decimals here to check. Yep, so we got exactly the same. And then looking at the p-values, those are the same as well. And this one tells us that with X2 in the model, X1 is, is there is a linear association between Y and X1. And then this one tells us that when X1 is in the model, there's a linear association between y and x2. So taken together, this tells us that both predictors are playing a role in helping us predict y. Okay, so that's uh, uh, an overview of hypothesis testing in the multiple linear regression model.